And, okay. You know, the, the, the archaeological evidence uh, that, that says that Khufu, you know, built the Great Pyramid is much stronger than, uh, than the alternative crowd allows. First of all, there's the debate about the uh, graffiti in the relieving chambers. And what the ancient, the, you know, the, the people that get so strong about this fail to, uh, fail to acknowledge is that Zahi Awas took Robert Baval, Graham Hancock, and John Anthony West up to the relieving chambers. Mm -hmm. They saw the graffiti and every one of them said, that's real. I was alive at the time, you know, because I was in okay. 70, 79 or something when that right. happened. And, and I remember exactly what Baval did, the way he humbled himself, the way he, he, it wasn't a complete humbling, but what he said was before that he was on record with Graham Hancock and saying that it was built in 10,000 BC. And they based that on the heavens, you know, Leo, where Leo was and, and uh, you know, where the, the Orion, where, where Orion was at that time. And so they said at 10,000 BC. So what they changed to was they said, okay, it wasn't built in 10,000 BC. It was designed in 10,000 ah, Okay. And that, that's what Baval said at the time. Now, you know, decades went on and maybe they, but John Anthony West said, anybody that doesn't think that's real is crazy. John Anthony West made some very strong statements. Uh, ancient yeah. Architects has, has quoted both Graham Hancock and John Anthony West. West. So, so let's just take that one piece of evidence. Sure. If even those guys, the leading trinity of the alternative movement, Baval, Hancock, and West, if they're saying that graffiti is real, that means that Khufu's workmen in Aswan, 500 miles away, etched uh, in the red ochre paint that's still used today, they, and the red ochre paint, you know, I made this block and it's the 17th year of Khufu. Right. And the, that Scott Crichton book, you know, the evidence that, that, that they try and say, first, <laughs> the, the idea that uh, that was all forged by Howard Weiss, my goodness, Vice, okay, if you've seen what Michelangelo did on his back for three years, painting the Sistine Chapel, you would yeah. have had to have skills like that. Those, that, that graffiti is upside down. Yep. How do you get scaffolding up in there? It's hard enough to squeeze your body through there. So, you, so how, do you, how do you get upside down? Also, the forms of Khufu that were used were not known by Egyptologists at that time. Now, that's a fact. 1837, even specialists in ancient Egypt like Samuel Birch of the British Museum could not have faked these quarry marks. This is because they have features that even the experts of the day did not understand, but which have become known since. In fact, they fit in perfectly with later discoveries and later analyses. According to Martin Stower, the so-called misspellings and errors in the graffiti were actually imperfections in 19th century knowledge of hieroglyphs projected onto the correctly spelled hieroglyphs themselves. To say it's a forgery is really quite lazy. We are not simply talking about one cartouche, there are many. So Weiss couldn't have forged something he didn't even know because no Egyptologist knew would know what to forge because the Egyptologists didn't know several of the forms of the name Khufu, you know. So, so you know, th that, is, that is evidence number one that, that, you, that you just can't be overcome. That's evidence right. that Khufu built the Great Pyramid. Okay. You know, another one is, and, and this is equally as powerful, the uh, Queen's Chamber air shaft yes. wasn't opened until 1872 by Wayman Dixon. He, uh, he, there was a, uh, a shipbuilder, uh, I forgot his name, that suggested that they look in the Queen's Chamber in the same approximate place as the air shafts, which were plainly visible in the King's Chamber. And so they did that. He tapped around. And so he went in about eight inches in. They found there's air shafts in the Queen's Chamber. Just, that was the first time they had been discovered since they were put in. Yeah. So, sure. so that means anything in there they didn't have robots, Jedi robots, you know, get and bring type robots back, right. back then. So anything that was in there was in there. Well, one of the things that was in there was the wood. 
And that you, if you follow the torturous story of where that wood went from the time Dixon opened it, then he sends some of the artifacts back to England and to Scotland for, for uh, uh, C. Piazzi Smith to look at, the Astronomer Royal from Scotland, and uh, how they were sent back and forth. And then the wood was misplaced in the Egyptian Museum, and it was just found at the University of Edinburgh by an Egyptian woman who happened to be working there. She was in the Far East section. She knew this was Egyptian. It shouldn't be in the Far East section. And she recognized this is the, this is the wood from Wayman Dixman. From, and it was just carbon dated. Oh, really? Now, you know, carbon dating is something that always the, you know, ancient alternative yeah. crowd wants to use. Okay, so the, the carbon dating puts it at about the time of Khufu. Some, yeah. some of the carbon dating was maybe 200 year, years older. But in, when you take the old wood problem, just yeah. study what the, just the old wood problem. It could have come from a cedar of Lebanon that was very old and was only used recently. And plus and a very big tree, the inward part of the tree dates differently than the outer part of the tree. So, so a 200 year difference is nothing in, in carbon dating. So that's a second very powerful archeological yeah. evidence yeah. that the Great Pyramid was built at the time of Khufu. And if you say, well, he he redid he he you know, there was something there before him, and he just put a little trimming on the top. Yeah. Well, they were at least up to the queen's chamber, right? Right. At that time, exactly. So if you can build up to the so if you built everything that's on the Great Pyramid above the queen's chamber, including the queen's chamber, and let's face it, that shaft, you know, th then you're pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. You might as well have been the original Atlantis, right? If you're, right. You that's well. so amazing. The ancient Egyptians couldn't have done it. It's so amazing. Well, guess what? If if the you know you say that they built on top of what everything below the queen's chamber was built before them, that's nothing. What's below the queen's chamber is nothing. It's what's above it that's amazing. So the yeah. the Egyptians did the amazing thing. So two powerful archaeological right. evidences. Also, people a lot of people don't know that when the casing stones were finally uncovered, because uh, C. P. Ozzie Smith, who the astronomer royal for Scotland, who gave his life to studying the Great Pyramid in many ways at, at a certain point, he couldn't get the exact dimensions of the base because the pyramid was covered with rubble as it was for centuries, yeah. for thousands of years. When it was finally cleared away, they found a bunch of Khufu uh, cartouches uh, hidden away behind that no one could have snuck in there and forged. So there's three powerful archaeological evidences yeah. that the Great Very Pyramid was built by Khufu. So get over it. Ancient Ancient architects, uh, Matt Simpson's a great researcher, a great YouTube channel. He was always an alternative guy and he kept studying and studying. And he did this you know, YouTube uh, video recently where he said 10 reasons why Khufu built the Great Pyramid. Mm -hmm. And I think he lost a couple hundred, well, not a couple hundred, but he lost, I know, tens of thousands of followers when he said that. Oh, man. But, but, well, he sees he had, he had almost 400,000 at one yeah. point, but I know people didn't like that, but he, he just is, you know, was... I told him a long time ago. I taught I taught Matt a long time ago. I told him I said you're you're gonna you're gonna come to see that Khufu built the Great Pyramid, and he has. Interesting. So, okay. You know, to me, that argument's over. I, yeah.